Hey guys, Adam Hart here. Here's a bunch of mistakes and tips that'll help you. Number one, not having them worship the shrine for devotion right away. Take a break from going out on runs and set all your followers to worship while you clean up poop and vomit. This will earn devotion fast so you can unlock buildings like the lumber yard and stone mine, which will earn you wood and stone and you'll use that for everything. And even when you have all the divine inspiration upgrades unlocked, make use of them worshiping it because it'll give you money. Two, not getting the special populations card. You're gonna need this to get a lobster. It's a small fish at Pilgrim's Passage. This increases the chances that you'll get a lobster. And before when I did this without the card, I never got it despite all the time I fished. And many of you probably need just a lobster out of this list like I did. Once you finally get it, you'll be able to buy any type of fish you want for cooking at home. And here we just bought three lobsters. Number three, not get a necklaces back. Once they die, harvest their meat and get the necklace back so you can use it on other followers. Four, not buying more tarot cards. Did you know that you can go up to the small collection on the side and buy additional cards? Five, not going for a no damage boss fight attempt. You'll take home more resources if you don't take any damage during mini boss or boss fights. Six, not get in the pharma station and the pharma station upgrade ASAP. The first station lets them plant and water crops for you. The second will make your followers place plants in a box for you to collect. That'll save so much time from you having to go out and collect crops yourself. Don't even collect your crops and just save up for the pharma station upgrades. Seven, not placing the seed and fertilizer outside the pharma station. Do this to make use of every land tile within the pharma station. Eight, not placing related things near each other. Place the outhouse near the fertilizer so you can go from collecting versus poop to putting it right in the fertilizer, which should then be near your farm so your followers don't have to travel far to use it. Place offering statues, lumberjacks, stone mines, and other buildings near each other to collect items easier and for organization. Nine, going out on runs without cooking any meals. Cook a bunch of meals before leaving and they'll still be available to your followers even when you're not at home anymore and you can't see the food on the screen. As you can see, the hunger level is being restored, but I'm not at home. 10, forgetting to eat a meal yourself. Once you beat a boss, you'll be able to unlock the hunger card. Once a day, if you eat a meal, you'll receive a blue heart, so make sure you do this before going on a run. 11, forgetting to look at the day or night clock when going out on runs. This is useful when picking tarot cards like extra damage in the day or night. 12, not using omnipresence at the beginning of runs. So this skill lets you exit a level at any time, but you can use it to keep resetting the run until you're happy with the starting weapon and curse. This is also extremely useful because one time spiders didn't hatch from the egg at the top of the screen, and I was stuck in the room because not all enemies had been defeated. So at the time I didn't have the skill and had to quit to the main menu, but once you have the skill, you can back out at any time, like when you have glitches. 13. Headed back home too soon. You may have returned home instead of going through the green door to continue your run. Even if your followers are grown unfaithful, sick, or hungry, they won't leave the cult right away. If their faith plummets, they'll become a dissenter and speak out against you, but they'll still be in your cult, and you usually get a warning that they will take some money and leave soon, but you still have some time to come back put them in prison, or even kill them. If their levels go all the way down, you still have a little bit because they're gonna starve and be sick for a little while before they eventually die. Even if their levels are already low before going through the green door, you can always buy a new follower from the spider on or after that run and or resurrect dead followers. 14, as soon as you enter a room, don't just attack at random. Focus on one enemy at a time and the one that you know will give you the most trouble. 15, individually blessing, inspiring your followers. There's other ways to build faith, such as completing quests, repairing beds, sermons, gifting gifts, and cooking food. You can even do a brainwashing ritual to not worry about faith for three days. This makes them level up as well, and you can even get pieces for a commandment stone, which unlocks new abilities in your cult. 16, placing the DLC flower floor down everywhere. So there's a bug in the game right now where the floor will put itself back down again if you remove it. I took the floor off, I went somewhere, I came back, and the floor put itself all down again. I've only had this issue with the DLC flower floor, so I'd recommend placing it down on part of the map rather than the whole area. 17, running around trying to find a specific follower, especially when you have lots of people. Instead of looking for them, just go to the confession booth and choose them. Even though you have to wait through the confession animation, it won't take long and it'll bring them to you. 18, not upgrading the rituals and the ritual cooldown sooner. Get these early on in the game because they're really important because you can do things like lock in their faith or hunger levels so you don't have to worry about those while you're out on runs, resurrecting high level followers, and many more useful things in the rituals. Pair this with the missionary where they go out and find bones, and soon you have the ability to do more rituals and do them more often. 19. Doing sermons before indoctrinating a new member. Do them after to level them up and collect their devotion. 20. Not looking at the items hanging above an exit which indicates what kind of room you're going to enter next, like stars indicating a tarot card room. Also look at the little icons under different rooms on the map which indicates the room has modifiers, such as double gold, or double damage, and sometimes bad modifiers, like enemies drop poison. And 21. When you get a weapon that gives you divine inspiration as you collect for Vower, if you see it, pick the tarot card that makes enemies drop twice the for Vower. Sometimes you have special tarot cards that pair perfectly with the type of weapon you have, so be on the lookout for what exactly your weapon does, and specific tarot cards that will be the perfect combination 
for that weapon. I hope this helps you guys out. Like and subscribe for more, and thanks for watching.